Today, I'm tying in two completely opposite worlds. One being bodybuilding, the other being entrepreneurship. The question I have is, are bodybuilders some of the best entrepreneurs? That's exactly what I'm going to talk about in today's episode. What's up, guys? Matt Wyke, Wyke Fitness. Thank you so much for tuning in to another podcast episode. As you know, on this podcast, I keep it real, I keep it uncut, unedited, you know, off the cuff. In fact, I wasn't even going to do a podcast episode this uh, this week. I'm working on two ebooks that I'm ghostwriting for two of my clients. I am literally packed to the gills with stuff. And I'm like, man, I, I just don't have time to do a podcast episode and then upload it, do the artwork so everything looks nice, that people will click on it. And then, it, you know, I had an idea and it popped in my head. I'm like, dang it. I'm like, I have to make time to do this. So I'm hoping I don't stretch this out too long because I have a million projects that I need to finish. Um, if I sound somewhat out of breath, I've literally, literally been running around um, running to the post office, running to UPS, uh, you know, running to a meeting, on a conference call, off a conference call, quick typing, responding to emails. You know, it, it's just been a whirlwind of a day. But what I want to talk about today, and, and I think there's some correlation, and you might be thinking, Matt, how the heck are you tying this in? It's a correlation between entrepreneurs and bodybuilders. Do they make the best business owners. And to an extent, I have to say yes. Now, you might be saying, but Matt, entrepreneurs who are extremely successful build teams around them. And yes, bodybuilders do the same thing. They have their, you know, nutritionists or their dietitians. They have their trainers. They have their massage therapists. They have all of these different people who are working on their body. Their body is their business. Okay, that's how they make money. So there's a direct correlation with that. Now, it's not in the sense of where they can actually delegate work out to people. It's not like you can say, hey, Jim, I need you to go to the gym today because I don't have time. Uh, Go do chess for me and let me know how it goes so I get all the benefits. You know, it doesn't work that way. But when you think about entrepreneurs... Entrepreneurs are constantly trying to figure out new ways to fix problems or new things that can help people. With bodybuilders, you know, they're looking to build their body. And there is no blueprint, unfortunately, where I can sit down every single client, give them the exact same diet, the exact same workout, and everyone benefits equally. It doesn't work that way. With entrepreneurship, you're constantly testing, evaluating, tweaking, repositioning, pivoting. You know, you're trying all these different things to get a better result at the end of the day. If your sales suck, if your marketing sucks, how are you going to fix that to make it better? The same thing goes with bodybuilders. How can they manipulate their macros, their caloric intake? Those ratios, how can they tweak their training protocol? You know, what regimen should they be following to get the best results for them? Is, you know, sets of 8 to 12 best for them? For majority, yes. Some, they might have to go up to 15, which obviously, if you know anything about health and fitness, anything above 12 reps is generally more geared towards endurance type of training. You think of anything from 15 to 20 or 15 to 25 reps being more for endurance athletes, not bodybuilders. But in the same sense, when you think of guys that are maxing out and they're doing anywhere from one to five to maybe even six reps, they're like, oh, well, those guys are power lifters. That's that's what they do. But some people respond better to different protocols. So there is no one size fits all. And it's the exact same thing with entrepreneurship. 
I can't tell you, hey, I did X, Y, and Z. That's how I've become successful. That's how I've grown my business. I mean, heck, I started out my career as a personal trainer and a strength and conditioning coach and a sports nutritionist. Transitioned into the supplement side of the business where I worked with NBTY, more specifically Metrex Pure Protein, uh, Balance Bar, Body Fortress. And for nearly a decade, I worked in the supplement industry. I knew nothing about owning my own business. I mean, some of you know my background, you know, I, for over 15 years, I've been a writer in the industry. And that's really how I got my name out, so to speak, in the industry. And it wasn't until, you know, the last year that I was with Metrek that I'm like, you know what? It's, it's really time for me to do my own thing. Um, and I, I've always had, you know, entrepreneurial, you know, tendencies. I was always into you know, collecting and selling baseball cards or any type of cards, you know, basketball, football, collecting them to get the whole set so it's worth more money so I can go sell it, you know, reinvest that into more cards, you know, event, you know, eventually you're just making more money and you're, you know, trading hands with people. Same thing with, uh, you know, magic cards and, and all those types of things. So I decided to dip my, you know, toe, so to speak, in in the entrepreneurial world and and it's been fairly successful, but it, it's not easy. I'll, you know, there's <laughs> there's no way that I can sit here and say, man, this has just been an easy road. Uh, you know, if you talk to my wife, you talk to my family. I've I've busted my ass. I work stupid long hours. Um, some people will say, Matt, you should spend more time with your family, and you know, to an extent, I I agree with them. But I know that I'm going to have to put the work in up front to make it successful. And then down the road is when, you know, I can kind of reap the rewards or, or you know, sow the seed uh, of, of all the fruits of my labor, so to speak. So, you know, I kind of took the, the, the mentality that I had when I was bodybuilding, not as a competitor, but as a body builder in the sense of I wanted to create my body, change its look, um, you know, just, just for myself, for my health and, you know, and everything else. So... I took those tendencies where I was constantly working on and tweaking and trying to figure out how to build my body, how to decrease my body fat, how to increase my muscle mass. Look, I'm not a mass freak. I started out, you know, 130 pounds soaking wet. I was a tennis player in college, so I didn't need size. I mean, it, that that's actually detrimental to, you know, your success as a competitive you know, athlete in, in terms of playing tennis, the more mass you have, you know, you're not really going to be able to move. Um, you know, you don't need the strength aspect. It's, it's more of the technique involved with, with tennis. So I didn't need to be a mass freak. I mean, you look at anybody that's on the ATP tour today. Um, even look at golfers, it's, it's fundamentals and technique more than anything. Yes, you have the endurance part of playing tennis. But I was constantly trying to work on how can I improve my body? I went from 130 pounds up to 210 pounds. Right now, I dialed it back a little bit. I'm sitting right around 200 pounds, which again, I'm not a mass freak. I'm not Phil Heath. I'm not Kai Green. I'm not Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be stepping on the uh, Olympia stage anytime soon. But, you know, the, the interesting thing is you have people who look at the 212 division. I mean, those guys are just little monsters. They're, they're little freaks. Uh, I mean, they weigh about the exact same that I do, but they're just ginormous. But they have that mindset of what do I have to do to constantly be improving my physique? It's the same concept with your business. So personally, I... I see a direct correlation between bodybuilding and entrepreneurship. And I would love to hear your feedback. Are you, you know, when you're listening to this, are you thinking, oh, okay, that does make sense. I mean, obviously, if, if you're not a bodybuilder, you're listening to this, whether it's on iTunes or maybe even my website or, or YouTube, you might be thinking, Matt, I'm really not into health and fitness. You know, I just like listening to different things. Um, I can't relate, so I don't see the correlation there. That's fine. I completely understand. But for those of you who are in the industry, you're you're into bodybuilding, you might be saying, damn, this guy's making some sense. 
Like, it, it, this makes total sense. Like, maybe I should try and do something. And I can guarantee that every single one of you have, at one point in your life, ran to a situation where you're like, man, if only X, Y, and Z were available, it would make my life so much easier. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, looking for the pot of gold at the, at the end of the rainbow or some type of unicorn or a magic pill. But if it's something that you can fix that's going to help you and your life, more than likely, it's going to help other people as well. And that's what entrepreneurship is about. So many people think that, oh, entrepreneurs, they're, they're just, you know, a bunch of rich people who only care about the money and, you know, they hate everybody else. And at the end of the day, all they do is count their money. Like, you have no idea what you're talking about. And, and if you think that way, then you have zero entrepreneurial tendencies whatsoever. Um, and you'll probably never do well in business if you decide to start your own. But, you know, the, the bottom line here is if, if you have the mindset of a bodybuilder, it can take you extremely far. I mean, bodybuilders are hard headed. They don't give up. I mean, yes, eventually bodybuilders, you know, competitive, they'll retire at some point, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to continue to work on their physique, work on their health, work on, you know, everything else, work on their strength, work on their relationships, uh, you know, work on their mind, uh, you know, mind muscle con uh, connection. I mean, all these different things, they're not going to walk away from it. So in my mind, bodybuilders have the perfect mentality and mindset to be an amazing entrepreneur if they take the exact same skill set and determination that they did during, you know, bodybuilding itself and apply that to starting their own business and solving problems, it could be extremely lucrative. And again, it's not coming back to the money, but let's face it. If you solve a problem and it's a big problem, regardless of the price, people are going to buy it. So whether you have a 99 cent app or a $99,000 software program that can help you know businesses that you create, at the end of the day, if the return on that investment to somebody makes sense and they can make their money back, double, triple, 10x, whatever their business, then it makes sense. So if you're solving the problem, you don't have to chase money because it will eventually come in. It might not be right away. It might take some marketing and some advertising and some testing and trial and evaluation, get it out in the marketplace, let people test it. It might take those things, but at the end of the day, you're constantly working towards a goal. And that's the same relationship that bodybuilders have with their health and fitness goals. So I don't want to drag this out. I think I hit all the points that in my head I wanted to hit. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at all the dings that are going off of my calendar of all the things that I should be doing. In fact, I have a meeting here in about two minutes. So I'm going to wrap this up. Um, it already went on a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I hope I got some great points across and made you think about the relationship between bodybuilders and entrepreneurs and how they both take their skills and their craft and their determination uh, and they apply it to their craft, whether it's a physique or you know a startup business. So I would love to hear your feedback. Let me know. If you're listening on iTunes, thank you so much. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. I mean, I'm trying to grow the, grow the channel, get the brand out there, get this information in the hands of the people who could really use it and who it can bring value to. If you're on the website listening to this, please feel free to browse around. I got tons of stuff on the website, different eBooks. There's apparel, there's free articles and interviews, obviously more podcasts. If you go back and, and you click through all the podcasts different blog posts. There's so much stuff there. So I hope you guys are finding a ton of value over on the whitefitness.com uh, website. But that's all I really want to talk about. Feel free to hit me up on social media at Wyke Fitness on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And until next time, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, an amazing week, and I hope to catch you next week on the next episode.